With a landmass stretching from the Atlantic to the Pacific and Arctic Oceans, Canada has one of the largest territories in the world. Hello, welcome to Open Tierra. Today we're covering Canada's history, geography, and culture. Thousands of years ago, the first people arrived in North America from Asia, likely crossing a land bridge from Siberia to Alaska during the last ice age, around 12,000 years ago, though some might have come even earlier. These early settlers moved southward along the edge of the ice that covered much of Canada at the time. This suggests that other parts of North America were inhabited before Canada, with the Inuit, who now live in Canada's Arctic, being among the last to arrive. Before Europeans came to Canada, there were no written records of the indigenous peoples, but archaeology and oral stories help us understand their history. The French were among the first Europeans to make a lasting footprint in Canada. In 1534, an explorer named Jacques Cartier arrived under the orders of the French king and claimed the lands along the St. Lawrence River for France. This was just the beginning. In 1608, Samuel de Champlain founded Quebec City, a settlement perched on the cliffs overlooking the St. Lawrence River, marking the heart of what would be called New France. This area eventually stretched from Quebec to parts of what is now the United States. The French settlers, known as habitants, developed good relationships with local indigenous tribes. They traded furs and goods, and these strong alliances helped them survive and grow in their new environment. This cooperation was key to the French establishing a strong presence in North America. While the French were building New France, the English were also setting their sights on the region. Although John Cabot sailing for the English had landed in Newfoundland in 1497, it took some time before the English started establishing their own permanent settlements. By 1610, they had their first settlement in Newfoundland. However, their significant move came after they defeated the French in the Seven Years' War, which ended in 1763 with the Treaty of Paris. This treaty handed almost all of France's territories in North America to the British. The British then encouraged more settlers to move to Canada, especially Loyalists, who remained faithful to the British Crown during the American Revolutionary War. These settlers brought British traditions, laws, and the English language to Canada, which contrasted with the French-speaking Catholic communities already established. To manage these differences, the British created policies like the Quebec Act of 1774, which allowed the French to keep their legal system and religion. This was an effort to keep peace and integrate the French settlers into the British way of governing. As the years passed, the foundations laid by French and English settlers began to shape a more unified nation. A pivotal moment came in 1867 when the British North America Act was passed. This act united Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia into a single entity known as the Dominion of Canada. This significant legislation marked the official birth of Canada as a country, establishing a confederation under the British Crown with its government to manage domestic affairs while Britain handled foreign affairs and defense. A major achievement that helped bind these vast distances and varied communities was the completion of the Canadian Pacific Railway in 1885. This tremendous engineering feat connected eastern and western Canada, making it easier for people, goods, and services to move across the country. The railway was essential for promoting national unity and economic growth, enabling the vast resources of the West to be accessed and developed. As Canada grew and developed through the late 19th and early 20th centuries, it began to play a more significant role on the world stage. A major turning point came in 1914 when World War I broke out. As part of the British Empire, Canada automatically joined the war effort. 
many Canadian soldiers fought bravely overseas, and the war had a big impact on Canada, helping to foster a sense of national identity separate from Britain. This growing sense of independence led to a crucial development in 1931. The Statute of Westminster was passed, which granted Canada full legislative independence from the United Kingdom. This meant that Canada could now make all its laws without British approval, which was big a step towards being completely self-governing. However, peace was short-lived, and in 1939, World War II began. Canada, now more autonomous, chose to join the war on the side of the Allies. Canadian forces played significant roles in many key battles and campaigns throughout the war, further enhancing Canada's international reputation and sense of national pride. The post-war era saw another monumental change in 1982. The Constitution Act was passed, which officially brought Canada's Constitution home from the United Kingdom. This act included the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, a Bill of Rights that protects various civil liberties. This was a defining moment, marking Canada's complete independence from British constitutional control. Amid these national developments, an important regional issue emerged in Quebec, where in 1995, an independence referendum was held. This was a vote to decide if Quebec should become an independent country. The idea was narrowly rejected by the people of Quebec, keeping Canada united. This event highlighted the diverse cultural and political landscape of Canada and underscored ongoing debates about identity and unity within the country. Modern Canada is known for its vibrant diversity, progressive values, and strong commitment to multiculturalism. The country has a bilingual identity with English and French as its official languages and a robust economy that includes natural resources, technology, and finance. Canada is recognized for its universal health care and high-quality education systems, as well as its active role in international diplomacy and peacekeeping. Immigration has played a key role in shaping Canada's inclusive society, and major cities like Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal are cultural melting pots. Despite its progressive image, Canada continues to work on addressing challenges, such as indigenous rights and reconciliation, striving to balance its historical roots with its forward-thinking vision for the future. The Canadian flag is easily recognized by its simple yet striking design. The main feature of the flag is the maple leaf, which has been a symbol of Canada since the 19th century. This leaf isn't just any maple leaf, but a special stylized version with 11 points. It appears not only on the national flag, but also on other important symbols throughout Canada, like the coats of arms and military flags. The colors of the flag, red and white, are also very meaningful. These colors have been used by many countries, including those that played a big role in forming Canada. Over time, Canadians have come to see these colors as reflecting parts of their natural environment. The white can remind people of the snowy landscapes that are common in Canada during the winter. The red might make people think of the bright red leaves of maple trees that you can see in the fall. Together, these elements make the Canadian flag a deep and powerful symbol of what Canada is all about. Canada is the second largest country in the world, covering an area of about 9.98 million square kilometers, or 3.85 million square miles. It has the longest coastline in the world, which stretches over 202,080 kilometers or 125,567 miles. Canada is only bordered by one other country, the United States, to the south and northwest. The capital city of Canada is Ottawa, located in Ontario. The climate in Canada changes a lot depending on where you are. Some places in the north are so cold in winter that temperatures can drop to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. But in southern parts, Summers can be warm, 
with temperatures reaching up to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. As of 2023, Canada has a population of about 38,516,736 people, making it the 38th largest country in the world by population. Canadians come from a variety of ethnic backgrounds. The largest groups include people who identify as Canadian at 15.6%, English at 14.7%, Scottish at 12.1%, French at 11%, and Irish at 12.1%. There are also significant numbers of Germans, Chinese, Italians, Indians, and Ukrainians, and smaller percentages of First Nations and Métis. These numbers add up to more than 100% because people can report more than one ethnic origin. Regarding languages, Canada is mainly English-speaking, with 87.1% of the population speaking English as their first language. French is also an official language, spoken by 29.1% of the population. Other languages spoken include various Chinese languages, Spanish, Punjabi, Arabic, Tagalog, and Italian. Religion in Canada is diverse as well. The majority of Canadians, about 53.3%, identify as Christian. There are also Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jews, and a small number of people who follow traditional North American indigenous religions. There are also people who follow other religions or who do not follow a religion. Canada has produced many notable individuals across various fields, such as entertainment, sports, literature, and more. In the entertainment industry, actors like Ryan Reynolds and Rachel McAdams have made a name for themselves internationally. The music world boasts talents like Celine Dion, Drake, Justin Bieber, and The Weeknd, who have all found success on the global stage. In sports, athletes like Wayne Gretzky, known as the Great One in ice hockey, and basketball player Steve Nash are among the country's most celebrated. Canada also has a rich literary tradition, with authors such as Margaret Atwood, known for works like The Handmaid's Tale. These individuals, among many others, contribute to Canada's reputation for fostering talent across a variety of disciplines. Canada has grown from a land of indigenous peoples and European settlers to a diverse and thriving country. If you enjoyed this video on Canada, you'll love this next one.